Timing down. Engaging tango. Engaging tango. Enemy down! Freeze eliminate! The Rainbow Six franchise is responsible for popularizing game features such as hardcore one-shot kills, permadeath, limited ammo, and strategic planning in FPS games. And in the process, it basically created the tactical FPS subgenre. Rainbow Six Vegas came out in 2006, and while it's missing many of the features that made the 1998 original feel so fresh and unique at the time, it's still a fantastic action-packed tactical FPS. This game, as well as its sequel, Rainbow Six Vegas 2, are on sale on Steam right now along with Rainbow Six 3, Lockdown, and Siege, all being on sale until March 9th. So if you never played any of these games, now is an excellent time to do so. Lost contact. Rainbow Six Vegas is kind of a polarizing entry in the series because it does away with some of the gameplay elements that made the original such a standout. There's no ability to pick your squad mates, and there's actually no planning phase before any of the missions. You're just kind of dropped into a level with two predetermined AI squad mates and you're left to progress through a mostly linear level completely blind. However, it's still a Rainbow Six game, and as such, you're still able to do some tactical sh**. You can order your squad mates around, you can tell them to follow you or hold their positions, and even go to a specific location. You can order them to stack up on doors and prep to breach it, and you can also change their rules of engagement between return fire only or weapons free, which will keep them silent or let them attack on sight, depending on what strategy you're going for. Something I like about this game is that it lets you use or ignore these features as much as you like, but it does give you plenty of opportunities to use these mechanics. You'll very often come up to a closed off room with multiple entry points, and to survey the situation you can walk up to a door and use a snake camera to see what's waiting on the other side. From there you can stack your team on a door of your choosing, and depending on the ROE you've set for them, you can order them to breach the door using several different tools. They can simply open the door and walk through, or they can breach using flashbangs, smoke or frag grenades, or even blast charges directly on the door if you really want to make a good first impression. In between these tactical breaching and clearing sections, there are larger, more open areas in each level that are more traditional as far as FPSs go. In these sections, you just need to fight your way through until you reach the next smaller area. This game came out at a time when the cover shooting mechanic was gaining a lot of traction and becoming very popular. The game highly encourages you to take cover behind walls and flank around enemies to hit them from the side. And all of this reminds me a lot of Gears of War, which also came out around the same time. These mechanics work well and it's a good way to keep yourself safe from enemy fire, but you're never 100% safe. Enemies can still shoot your limbs if they're sticking out behind cover. It's not like a lot of other games where as soon as you take cover behind something, you're basically invincible until you peek out. So you do have to be a little bit more aware of your surroundings and be sure that you're not getting flanked by the enemies themselves. You can also ADS for more precise shooting if you want, and using a mix of both is a great way to ensure your survival, especially in the later levels when enemies become a lot tougher. The gameplay loop works well, no matter what strategy you go with. If you choose, you can storm through levels guns blazing, and as long as you're fast enough, you can save hostages without much planning at all. It does help that your AI squad mates are quite smart and crack shots themselves though. You do have the ability to go silent with suppressors if you want, but I didn't find them to be all that helpful. The game forces you into combat quite often, and for the areas that offer stealth as an option, you can sometimes pick off one, two, maybe three bad guys on the outskirts before dealing with the clump in the middle. But just like your squad mates, enemy AI is also very smart. They have eagle vision and can spot you and their dead comrades very quickly and before you know it, the entire level has gone from zero dark 30 to heat.
This game is action-packed, and I think this is where Rainbow Six Vegas divided the fanbase a little bit. Vegas is the first game in the series that broke out of the tactical shooter FPS subgenre and garnered some real mainstream attention. Being more stripped down and stylish versus its predecessors made it very easy for the average player to pick it up and get going. It is without a doubt a great looking game. Even by today's standards, it holds up pretty damn well. There is this weird light blooming effect that makes the game look kind of soft, but style-wise, the environments, weapon models, and effects all look great. The combat feels satisfying and enemies do offer up a decent challenge. There is one level about halfway through the game where the difficulty really spikes though, but besides that, the experience was smooth and consistent. Most of the game's weapons and equipment are available to the player right off the bat. There's not really any leveling or unlocking system here. You can pick two long guns, a sidearm, and there's two equipment slots for things like grenades and door charges. You can put one attachment on each weapon, which basically comes down to an optic, laser light, or extended mag in most cases. And you can customize your loadout at equipment crates dotted around most levels, or in the command chopper that occasionally carries you and your team from level to level. You can also pick up weapons from fallen enemies if you see something cool that's not available in the equipment crates. The game opens up with you hunting the leader of a terrorist organization in Mexico, but it quickly throws you into Sin City and tasks you with neutralizing terrorist cells that are holed up in all manner of casinos, restaurants, and glitzy high-rise hotels. There's even one level that has you fighting through the iconic Fremont Street, with its massive canopy display lighting up the intense combat happening below. Fighting in these levels is very tense and satisfying. Slot machines explode in a shower of coins and sparks, windows shatter with believable effects, and enemy ragdolls are very convincing and provide good feedback to the player. Overall, I'm incredibly surprised. Rainbow Six Vegas may not be the tight strategic thinking man shooter that the original and its subsequent DLCs were, but it still retains enough of that DNA to be a satisfying tactical shooter, while bringing plenty of style along with it. It's still very satisfying to play today, and don't forget that its sequel Vegas 2, which was also critically acclaimed, is on sale as well until the 9th.